He's going to get away from one sack attempt, but now they're going to get him on the ground. Josh Allen finished him off. He's going to get hit. He's going to get sacked again. Saxonville got him that time. Moving around the pocket, he gets hit. He's going to get sacked. He got him in the backfield. That is the rookie, Josh Allen. That is his eighth sack of the year. Congratulations to Josh Allen. He has now taken the lead amongst the rookies in the National Football League as well. See what the Nick Cannon love don't cost a thing dance. Joining us right now is one of our favorite prospects from the NFL draft in 2019. He's taken his success at Kentucky and he brought it with him to the pros as a Jaguars rookie. He records 10 sacks this season. Let's give it up once again to one of our favorites, Josh Allen. Josh, what's up, Josh? What's up, y'all boys? Thank y'all for having me on. What's Thank up, man? Of course, man. Now, Josh, like the that. season hasn't gone exactly how you guys hoped. Um, just five wins. But what are you guys looking to mm -hmm. prove over the next couple of weeks of the season? Uh, that we're still a good team, uh, you know, besides the record, uh, that we're going to play and compete against anybody. And uh, we're going to try our hardest to win these last two games and finish the season strong. And uh, so we can, you know, we can, we can start early. We can start with a fresh face with uh, a three-win uh, season. Well, three, you know, in the games with three wins. So that's our goal. And, mm -hmm. But we're going to take it one game at a time and, you know, and, and come out swinging. Josh, we love Jacksonville fans here on the show. Your mayor, a friend and fan of the show. So I know that all of those fans collectively held their breath on Sunday against the Raiders when you were forced to exit with that shoulder stinger. So you were able mm -hmm. to come back to the game. or uh, Actually, you didn't. How is your health heading towards the Falcons matchup this weekend? Uh, I'm good. Uh, you know, it's just football. You know, things like that happen all the time to a lot of great players. So... I pride myself on finishing games and, you know, just to, to fight through everything I can, fight through adversity. I feel like that was a real adverse time for me, and, and I'm still fighting, and I'm going to be able to play this week. Josh, at times on this show, we have given full segments to the season Devin Bush is having. We mm -hmm. have done flips over Nick Bosa and what he is doing. But when I look at the rookie sack leaders in the NFL, Josh Allen is number one. Now, you play in Jacksonville. You don't play necessarily a team like Pittsburgh or San Francisco with those huge national mm -hmm. fan bases. Do you believe you're being overlooked for defensive rookie of the year because of the season you're having? Maybe not getting the same media love that the others are? Uh, I mean, you know, I can't control that. I can just control what I can do on Sundays, and you know, it's you know, you got to think about my college career, man. I've been it's been like this my whole life, man. And so, you know, it, it's nothing new to me. I still got to keep fighting every week, and uh, you know, I fight for my teammates first off, and uh, play for them, and I'm just gonna keep doing what I do. We know you are, Josh. The last time we had you on, it was the morning of the draft, big day, so much yeah, uncertainty for you at that point. But now that you've gotten, you've got your team, you've got your new city, and you guys have gotten all the way through this part of the season, did you have the classic welcome to the NFL moment, whether it was on the field against an opponent or in practice when you were like, I'm not at Kentucky anymore? Do you remember that? I mean, uh, yeah. Just, I remember just my first game, you know, we played against Kansas We played against the Chiefs, and just, you know, my, my first sack was against Patrick Mahomes. They called it back. But it was just like that moment, I was just like, bro, this is something I dreamed about my whole life. And, you know, now that I'm out here doing what I can do, doing what I love with my teammates, you know, it was just an unbelievable moment. And just having the respect from players coming up to me after the game and just congratulating me, just saying how good of a player I am, like guys that I've been idolized, you know, for my whole careers, my whole career. So, you know, that's, that's probably the best, you know, Wake up moment for me, just the respect of those guys and and just the love that I get from them, and that's what that's you know a great reason why I love this game of football. All right, Josh, I'm gonna let you put your ear in because I see it popping out. But listen, in there. you're not the only rookie in Jacksonville that has made some waves. Um, I'm not sure anything captured the imagination of a fan base like Miss Mania. It was crazy. There was mustaches everywhere. People were wearing mm -hmm. jean shorts and and outfits yep. to dress like them. What was it like when the city was a buzz and he was on the field lighting it up? I mean, that's my that's my classmate. You know, we came in together. 
Uh, you know, I, I love Garner. You know, he who, what you see on TV is who he really is. His personality is so bold, which I love and respect from him. And, you know, I go to work with him every day. But just that Minshew Mania, man, I was glad to see that on TV. I remember we had a little, it was our bye week, and he was in uh, Washington State, and I was just watching the game, and then they had him fop- popping up on the screen and showing old pictures and telling the stories, and I was just like, bro, I love this. You know, I love this guy. He's he's just a great person on and off the field. He's going to be a great leader for us, and, you know, just ho- hopefully we'll keep this train going. Uh, another guy that you go to war with is a very good friend of our show, Yannick Ngakwe. And you two have combined to form one of the most, most fearsome pass rushing duos in the NFL, 18 combined sacks. What have you learned from him, and how much has he helped you being on the other side? Well, first, Yann is a dog. You know, he's probably one of the best players I have seen. And I'm glad we're on the same team, so I definitely get to learn from him. Uh, he just brings that competitive edge. He just brings that mindset of that nobody can really block him. Like, he like he don't take no crap from nobody, and I love that. You know, I love the drive that he has. I love the passion that he plays with, and, you know, I love that man too. Him and Calais, Smoot, all these guys up front. But Jan is a, definitely a different breed and something that I, you know, also want to carry over in my years to come. Josh, we appreciate you joining us, man. You're a couple of weeks away from the season being over, so come kick it with us here in New York. You know, we got a seat for you at the table. I definitely will. I definitely will. I would definitely pull up on y'all, for sure. <laughs> All right. That's what's up, man. Appreciate you. Like toast. Uh, where, 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 where I'm going to sit at? Pop up there. Pop up. Another AFC player. We'll tell those out in the pull newsroom like in that. Culver City with the latest from Coast to Coast. Three big games on Saturday right here. That we do. All right. Thank you, Kay. Appreciate that. Well, Bengals fans, all along with A.J. Green, have been hoping, or at least holding out hope, the wide receiver will be able to return this season from an ankle injury suffered in the first practice of the preseason. But it doesn't sound like it'll be happening. Green telling the team's website he will probably not play in the Bengals' final two games of the season, which also means his time in Cincy could be over as well. Green, an unrestricted free agent in 2020, second on the Bengals' all-time receiving yards and touchdowns list behind Chad Ocho Cinco Johnson in both categories. As part of the NFL's Huddle for 100 campaign, the Eagles recently hosting a meal packaging event at Lincoln Financial Field. Players helping put together 30,000 meal kits to be distributed to local children in need. Meanwhile, Rams quarterback Jared Goff dealing with a hand injury after hitting it on the helmet of Andrew Whitworth in Sunday's loss to the Cowboys. Head coach Sean McVay says his QB will be good for Saturday night's game against the 49ers. Goff says it's a contusion and a little stiff, but it'll be good in a day or two. If Goff is looking for a shoulder to cry on about his injury, uh, don't go to Whitworth. Uh, you know what is lineman? I don't think we have much sympathy for finger injuries. So, uh, you know, I've dislocated everyone I got. So, uh, you know, I think uh, it's one of those things he bruised his hand. And, you yeah, know, I think that was, you know, what, in the first half. So he played the rest of the game with it. I don't think it was an issue. So. No sympathy whatsoever. Plenty 